Editor-in-Chief Speaks. Hello everybody, this is Nia Pierce, Editor-in-Chief at SheAttack.com, and this is another episode of ESC Speaks. So today on ESC Speaks, we're going to be talking about upgradable consoles. What is the deal with upgradable consoles? Everybody seems to be either in an uproar about it or they're extremely excited about it <laughs> you know i don't really see too many people who are kind of in the middle on this so maybe it's just the circles that i'm in or the types of information that i'm seeing on my feed on my social media but it seems to be kind of a, a controversial thing at the moment so just from like a personal standpoint you guys know me if you have been watching the she attack or my personal channel for quite some time you know i'm a very old school traditional gamer i grew up in the era of Sega and Nintendo so my thoughts personally on console gaming is very much rooted in the premise of console gaming being a way to bring the arcade experience to your living room or your bedroom if you were one of those individuals that was lucky enough to have a TV in your your bedroom I, I definitely envy you because <laughs> I didn't have one as a child and the whole console experience was kind of based on you playing your games with your friends, your siblings, your parents, or whoever on that one set box that was up to optimized to play those particular games with the same set specs that everybody else had and it was just like a convenience device. I think that's really the best way to look at consoles. Consoles are the very definition of an item of convenience and because Technology is moving so rapidly now, the way that we view consoles is also rapidly changing with the times. I mean, you know, these days, consoles are basically mini PCs. They do so many things that computers can do. You know, these days, your consoles are streaming devices for music and movies. They can play Blu-rays and DVDs. They can even in some cases replace your cable box if you have the right applications installed on your device to watch your TV shows and movies and things like that. You know, you can stream gameplay from your console directly to your channel on YouTube or Twitch. And you can even on the Xbox and the PlayStation, you know, edit these videos. And there's so many things that you can do on consoles that you were not able to do in previous generations. And to many gamers, despite these technical advances, they are still, and I think, you know, this applies to me and many other gamers, they are still set on this standard of a convenience factor. They are set on the idea that you buy a box, you have it for approximately five years or more in the case of Generation 7, which lasted almost <laughs> a decade. And in this, in some capacity, does take away the convenience factor of having that set box set up. And it does break the routine of having your box, that is your box, for half a decade. And to many people, this could be very jarring. You know, when you're so used to doing something for so long and then somebody breaks you out of that routine, that can do some some things to you in some cases that could mentally mess you up of course this is video games so let's hope that it doesn't get that serious but a breaking routine could be something um that could weigh on pretty much anybody i could say and one thing also that kind of comes into play on the upgradable concept is that for some people they don't really see the point of an upgradable console because if something is going to be upgradable it needs to be customizable and 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 i and i think it's a lot of it is because there's this dichotomy between console gaming and pc gaming console gaming is mostly based around convenience pc gaming is mostly around the idea of customization now i have a pc my pc was made specifically for editing though it can play games so for my pc i tried to up the ante on processing while the graphical fidelity kind of took a back seat because i tailored it to my needs some people make sure that the graphical fidelity is to a certain point and the processing power is kind of like middle of the road it doesn't really mean too much as long as it's enough to get the job done and some people, depending on how much money you're willing to put into this thing, they go balls to the wall with both. 
Now, the thing with that though, is that with PCs, like I mentioned, you can upgrade your specs as you so choose in any way that fits your needs. And you can't really do that with an upgradable console. With an upgradable console, you're kind of at the mercy of the, the manufacturer, you know. The manufacturer essentially chooses the experience for you based on how much money they are willing to spend to produce these things and how much money they think that the average consumer is willing to spend. And if the PS4 Neo is an upgradable box, it might take away some of that customization. I'll, I'm actually very sure it's gonna take away some of that customization. As far as Xbox is concerned, Phil Spencer has said that he has no interest in doing like a half jump as far as like an upgradable console is concerned. But in the past, they did say they were gonna make the Xbox One upgradable, which kind of makes it sound like they're gonna do some kind of steam machine that just so happens to have movable parts. Because I, at least to my knowledge, I don't have a steam machine, so if you guys are watching this video, let me know if I'm wrong. But to my knowledge, the typical steam machine does not have movable parts. It's basically a console that is based around Steam OS. But let me know if I'm wrong. So if Xbox, decides to make an upgradable console with movable parts, in my opinion, that sounds a little bit more appealing to me because you get to choose your experience. Now, just to kind of wrap this up in a whole pretty bow, on a personal level, I don't care about upgradable consoles. I'm just gonna be completely 100% honest with you. It doesn't make me upset because I don't care <laughs> and I'm not rushing out to get one either because I don't care. Just to be clear here, if I'm going to upgrade anything, it's gonna be my PC. I would much rather put in the time and the money to upgrade parts of my PC that I feel that accommodates for my lifestyle and do so to my liking. That's just kind of my opinion. And I also feel that at the end of the day, this kind of reeks of the possibility that these consoles were probably rushed and as a result, future-proofing these consoles kind of took a back seat. If I can remember correctly, there were many articles before the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One were officially revealed when they were still codenamed Durango and codenamed Orbis that the new standard for these consoles was shooting for 1080p 60 frames per second. Now, here we are in 2016 and we're barely seeing any games at 1080p 60 frames per second. So it's kind of making me think that maybe these consoles were rushed just to get the 8th generation started. Or maybe at the time Sony nor Microsoft were willing to put the money needed into making beefier consoles because they were trying to just get them out the door that it was like an oversight on their part and now they're trying to make up for it by coming out with these consoles that have a little bit beefier specs within the same generation. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Let me know what you guys think about it. Let's get the discussion going in the comment section. And yeah, so that's pretty much my thoughts. And I've been listening to a lot of podcasts about this as well. You know, I saw a video by Broken Games HD and then there was also a podcast, the Level Live and Level podcast by Level Head Gamer, um, John Shaw from Full Effect Gaming, D2K Prime, and Jedi Knight. And they also had a very interesting conversation about this as well. It got very heated. <laughs> But you know, although I don't care, it is an interesting topic and I have been hearing everybody's opinions about it. So let me know what you think and I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Peace.